So check it out. Friends of Shades Creek. With a real slim shady, please stand up. So let's go. We are at Homewood High School Patriots. I think we're early. Four. Couple folks. Yeah. Be your first time. We're gonna head this way, Henry. Let's go. Henry Hughes. Uh, oh, Henry Hughes, sorry. <laughs> and Friends of Shades Creek. Uh, this is a true public property that um, was uh, uh, put under the Freshwater Land Trust about 10, 12 years ago, maybe a little longer than that. So it's permanently protected forever. The proposal was for 100 years, they said, no, no, that's not good enough, forever. Yeah. So it take a vote of all the citizens of Homewood to undo that. So uh, the Freshwater Land Trust uh, has the development rights, but the city still owns the property. So nothing can be done on the property without the permission of the Freshwater Land Trust. So it's a great arrangement. Did you guys will sneak in for that open door? So we've got some more people. So this is where it's going to start, the actual watching and what this is they say is a migration when the weather starts getting incredibly cold they all migrate off the hill all the salamanders migrate come down here to the creeks and that's where we've seen them in the past and they breed and then i guess when it warms back up they go back up the hill that's my story i'm sticking to it a lot more people than I thought could be here. Uh, uh, Salamander Festival. Uh, Friends of State Street. I'm Paul Freed and I'm a uh, board member with Friends of State Street. And we welcome everybody uh, to be here today. I'm Henry Hughes, executive director of Friends of State Street. Uh, we're 25 years old. This is our 19th Salamander Festival. Uh, Salamander awareness all started here on this property. I've got some brochures. I, I probably have a small group, but there are many more of these inside. If you friend the Shades Creek table, if you want to grab one, it's got a map on the inside of the property. Um, pretty much unchanged since we since we did it some 10 years ago, 12 years ago. Uh, but this property was. Um, uh, the old Sanford University Nature Preserve, and it was loosely protected for um, 50 years, but not really legally, and so it got whittled away. Um, high school took some of the property, the church took some, the apartments took some, and whittled it down from 65 acres to 33. We had an opportunity to buy 32 acres back that came available up slope, so we restored the 65, but now it's kind of strung out on a longer uh, configuration. This is, um, this part here is uh, pretty much a natural old growth forest. As far as I can tell, there was never any logging, at least recently, or mining or any activity in here. It's pretty much a natural forest. So you might say it's a 10,000 year old forest that has uh, developed since uh, the Ice Age went away and the forest here took on dramatic changes at that time. And it's essentially what it is now, an oak hickory pine forest. Um, so uh, salamanders are a great indi indicator of uh, a, a healthy environment. So we're very uh, interested in protecting not only the spotted salamander, but the other species, Webster's, sea lions, zigzags, uh, dusky, many other species of salamanders that live here. I'd be glad to say something else about salamanders. So salamanders spend part of their life, every salamander spends part of its life in water. Some are almost completely aquatic and live in streams and rivers, including this, what looks like just a small little ditch, holds uh, salamanders, aquatic salamanders that live in this and complete their whole life cycle in here. This also feeds a little small wetland downstream it, that we'll, we'll talk about. But there's some other woodland species of salamanders that spend most of their life, uh, most of the time during the year, just behind me, up the hill, up the slope, buried down in the dirt, under the trees, under the rocks and logs. Salamanders like our spotted salamanders spend, um, again, 
uh, more than 12, uh, more, 11 months of the year under the underground, uh, burrowing around in, in, in the soil. We'd never see them. About this time of year, when it, uh, it gets cool for the first time, and then we have some warm rains that follow, those salamanders sense the change in temperature and the moisture, pop out of their burrows and out of the ground and start walking down the hill. They'll migrate down on rainy nights. They come all the way down the hill, come down and find the water and find little ponds, what we call uh, ephemeral or, or short-term wetlands, ephemeral ponds, where they mate. Uh, they do a little dance and, and the males and females, uh, the females lay some eggs and the males uh, uh, fertilize them. They lay egg jelly-like egg masses in the water and the, the salamander completes its life cycle by having a larva in that small pond. When we walk right over here, we'll see some of that habitat. So it's really cool. It's essential that they have good habitat all year long up here that's protected and healthy so they can have, uh, have shelter and find food. And then they move down and they have to be able to find water. These salamanders used to go a little bit farther down and certainly some of them do cross the road at, on rainy nights which puts them in jeopardy of getting run over by a car because these are these are salamanders about six inches long and they'll cross the road to get to the other ponds on the other side. So Friends of Shades Creek and the city of Homewood closed that road down on rainy nights in January to allow the migration of salamanders. So we'll talk about that some more, but I uh, just want to let you know this is a really cool habitat and really neat animals and it's all complex and all uh, tied together. It's important to take care of the land and the water and then just allow things that to move and migrate when they need to. Henry, yeah. anything else? That, yeah. Just talk about the trees quickly. Um, this site is sloped to the north. So Shades Mountain is facing north, and we're at the bottom of a pretty significant mountain for Birmingham. So this habitat is cool and moist. As a result, we find trees here that you won't find anywhere else in Birmingham except under similar conditions. Oak Mountain, uh, Rufter Mountain, um, uh, what are some of the other, uh, Red Mountain, uh, you find uh, similar habitats. One species I'll show you, um, you see this tree right here with striped bark, uh, white striped bark. I think there's another one behind me right here, it's called the Northern Red Oak. And we're at the extreme end of the continental range of northern red oak. It grows all the way to Ontario. It reaches similar size here on this site because it's cool and moist and very deep, rich soil. But if you go a few hundred feet up, you won't see it anymore. You won't see it on the south side of Shades Mountain. Also have American Beach, this gray bark species back here. And if I can find one, I'll show you the beech drops, a little small plant that grows only on the roots of beech trees. So a lot of cool things going on here. Um, but we'll go take a look at the salamander pond. And I would just say, don't ever underestimate the importance of a little pond because it's keeping this population sustained here, this one little pond. We we'll remind you, you always come back to this preserve. It's open to the public uh, year round. There's some signage on it, some QR codes that'll be activated, I think, in the next couple of weeks with information about the trees. Boy Scout troops, uh, Scout troops coming through here and have done uh, Eagle Service projects, building bridges and putting signage up. We appreciate all the community that invests in a small uh, but important uh, piece of property like this. Let's walk uh, gingerly at, through this way. We're So it has to get its sugar from it's another plant, and that plant is obligate uh, American beech. So it's only going to grow under the American beech tree. Very cool. So you'll see them around, scattered around. Wherever you find a, a beech tree, uh, they'll often be there. If you find them, they must be on a beech tree. Um, so um, kind of at the end of its growing season now, it actually produces seed. Um, but um, in, the, in the middle of the summer, they'll start coming back up. So um, we stepped over some down trees back here. and Those are northern red oaks. My concern is that we're seeing the northern red oak preferentially come down now. I've been watching them for the last 20 years. That may be a canary in the mine for climate change. We don't know. And if it is, it's probably having to do with the underground fungus that grows in the soil and supports the growth of, uh, of these large trees. There's been a lot written about that recently. It's like the new frontier, exploring the soil under forest trees. Um, and these fungus 
uh, unite the trees in the forest, even different species, and they share carbohydrates under underground. It's a fascinating subject. So just beginning to learn about that. So if you walk on down, Paul will show you the salamander pond. And we've been down here even this week. I was here at two in the morning this past week, closing the road off uh, because of the uh, high school dance took place. So can you actually <laughs> can you actually see them crossing like a well, bunch yeah, of them at yeah, a time? Yeah, that, that, and that's about life size. That's yeah, they'll, be, they'll be trucking right along yeah. on the other side. Cause the, the old channel of Shades Creek is over there. Right. So some right. of them go over there. Okay, cool. Once it goes Salamanders coming down the hill and finding uh, these bodies of water. Wait, I'm okay with you turning your back to me because I'm talking about the little pond, the little ditch right here behind us. That's what we call an ephemeral pond or a temporary wetland. Uh, that area that's holding water right now is actually just completely dried out in the summer. But for several months right now, it's going to hold water. This is a uh, rainwater that comes down, flows down the hill, and gets trapped right here holds out in there where it's just a few feet deep. The salamanders will find that water. Uh, the males come down and, and, and actually put their sperm packets into the water. The females come down there, figure out how to pick them up, fertilize themselves. There's a big egg mass um, that will get attached to twigs and sticks and small seedling trees that are kind of flooded right now. There'll be a big jelly-like egg mass on those with a, with a, and a, and a larval salamander hatches out of each one of those eggs. So this is okay to have. A lot of folks are worried about having standing water on property. It's absolutely very natural, very important to have these kind of ephemeral ponds. And so we see construction sites and when we clear land, we often try and dewater it and change the value and flatten things out. Hilly topography, little pockets of water like that, very important. It's okay that a tree fell across there. That's just giving it a little bit of habitat and structure uh, and uh, that kind of stuff. So just to let you know, um, this unassuming little body of water is going to have dozens of uh, salamanders come down to lay their eggs and hundreds and hopefully thousands of young salamanders will emerge from it after spending a few uh, few weeks and few months down there feeding on the bottom eating small little organisms plankton and that kind of stuff so the whole life cycle is is key on that finding water any quick question and then we'll we'll get the groups to kind of move along and then if you didn't hear me in the back i'll be glad to repeat myself so the question was, has it ever not had water in it? In the summertime, it's completely dry here. But in, in the wintertime, um, if there, there is a culvert that drains this over to the other side of the road, and if that culvert got in, enlarged or dug deeper or something, you might let the water go by, uh, go through. So right now, the, 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 there would have been natural pockets like this. The road is kind of acting like a dam for us right here and holding that water back. But this was a natural feature uh before but great question so we want it to hold water for the next month or two uh for sure we don't want it to go dry it's okay if it gets cold these animals are, are used to, to cold weather warm weather uh, but they just need to stay moist the eggs have to stay moist for, for their whole life cycle henry do you want to uh about yourself what, what, what's the question Wait, what i don't remember what is it where do their babies grow? Where, Where do, do the babies, babies grow? So the the, 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 the eggs are, are laid in the water. You're going to get a larval, a very small, small salamander that lives in the water for a few months. And then eventually they get their little legs. After And in a couple months, they start crawling back up the hill. And they're going to find a home under the leaves and under the tree stumps and under the rocks. And they're going to live there for a year or two, maybe even three years, before they're grown up and, and, and large enough and mature enough to make the long walk back down the hill to find the water so that's a great question so the little babies will hatch out of the water and come back up the hill water and water coming down off the creeks we don't want pollution in it coming from our roads our cars dripping oil or antifreeze we don't throw trash in this uh fertilizers and pesticides on our lawns and stuff we don't want that in this water so it's important the reason this is uh not only a, a important piece of feature but it's healthy clean water as opposed to something that might have been running off a parking lot or a, a golf course or our development in my yard or something like that. So that's important to maintain the water quality in here too. 
Great, thank you. Just one uh, comment, you'll notice a lot of down freeze. This phenomenon happens when you have high winds, but also soil saturation. So you'll see more of these toppled trees toward the base of the hill, particularly where it's wet. So right behind you, you see a recent uh, tree that fell, fell recently about uh, within the last year. We used to say, let's be at the big tree. Well, the tree is now on the ground. That's not entirely bad. This is a natural phenomenon. Harvard University has been studying this in Massachusetts. The hurricanes come up the Atlantic coast, slam into Massachusetts, and hit the Harvard forest. I'll just follow the folks in front of you. You're not downhill is the road, and you're not. You're going to be a bit, Everybody go see the road from every, just about every three spot. quarter of a mile walk. He said he goes all the way around up but on the other side, other side, and pops out back at the school. He said this is the biggest group they've had so far. So it's pretty neat. Pretty exciting. <laughs> Since I'm back to friends of Shade Street. Deal. Deal. He said if I make two hundred thousand dollars off this video. Since I'm back to Shades Creek. So this is the ethereal wetland that he talked about. How it's not there all the time. And a lot of people would go clear that out so all the water would wash out and it stayed sort of dry up. This trail is neat. And as you saw from the beginning, it's right here next to uh, Homewood high school look at this and there's also these So here's one right here they found. What did he try to cover it back up and squish it? No, it's fine. It's just cold. So there will there's actually Okay. We kind of strayed off a little bit. And you can find salamanders in just about every woods in Alabama. Didn't y'all, you hatched some out, didn't you? Yeah, y'all yeah. did. Y'all found the eggs and hatched them. And then uh, they took them back and hatched them and then took them back where they go. But anyway, we're gonna take a shortcut. He said there's a, a stretch straight over the mountain around here. I know it might've been hard to hear a lot of that, but this is pretty cool. Oh, one, two, three, go. No salamanders. Okay, go. Nope. Comes another group. Catching up. Jamming through the woods. She's got a little heart on her shirt. Reminds me of my youngest, my oldest squirrel when she was little. Which I miss a lot. In her home, we've got wildlife trips. Like, we are like kind of old lady. Holy smokes, look at all the people. I guess we need to pick a table. Let's see what we're gonna do.
That's what he was guessing. Yes, so her name is Alba. So that comes from the scientific name Quercus Alba, her white oaks, obviously, because she's kind of like an albino more. Yeah. Um, she was purchased because she was this color, not by us, by a previous owner. Um, there are like 800 different color variations of corn snakes, so it's hard for us to kind of determine exactly which one she is. Um, it's a tough shell, protected. You see his back legs. Excited. This is a snapper. This big guy is a spotted salamander. These are both found around. After that, I think we're gonna go to the bat, which is the freaking tent. That's just the acronym. But first, before we do that, we're gonna go down here to check out this Toyota. See, I saw it, and it's got all the. The ironic thing is, uh, it's got a flag on it. Well, it's TRD, so it's Toyota. It's gonna be. Is this one with a BMW engine? No, 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 no. This is a GR86. GR86. Um, now, who would put a bird right there? Oh. I've hit my share of birds. Oh, check it out. Um, that is. Dad Gum Smooth. Man, yeah, that's yeah. awesome, dude. That's your. Yeah, go ahead, man. So it's sweet. He said the whole thing is a wrap, so he's going to show us some even better carbon fiber. Look at that beauty. Oh my goodness, dude. dude. Holy smokes. <laughs> so that's carbon fiber? Yeah. A lot of rare parts in this car. So uh, like, oh GM. my that's goodness. From, like that's from a GT car in Japan, you know, so. So where'd you get it? Are you Japanese? No, I'm not. I I'm didn't not. think so. I, I, bought his, I, bought I lived his, in Japan about four years yeah. and yeah. <laughs> yeah, I bought this car brand new at back in 2013 in Mobile, Alabama. <laughs> so, yeah, <laughs> brand new. Yeah, and... <laughs> yeah, I think so. What? That's so cool. It was cool. Wasn't that an awesome car? Oh gosh. <laughs> He's all overly energized now because you got to see that car. This is the officially the end of the video. Pizza Palace. So now, thanks for watching my video.